Arndt Schultz principle. What that tells us is there's no reactions or changes can occur in the body if the amount of energy absorbed is insufficient to stimulate the absorbing tissue. And if that quantity of energy absorbed is too great, tissue, tissue disruption may occur and function cannot take place. Basically, it's pretty uh, simple. It's telling us that in order to create any kind of change in a tissue, you need to have the right amount of energy to, and sufficient amount of energy to, to, for that tissue to absorb it. And if you create too much of that energy, you could actually destroy it. So if you turn up the ultrasound, if you're trying to get down deep in an O-line guy's hamstring, you got there's a lot of apatose or fat tissue to get through, so you've got to crank up that ultrasound. If you turn it up too much, or you leave it over a particular spot for too long, it's actually going to create a burn, or it's going to uh, damage that tissue. Some more laws of electromagnetic radiation are the law of Grothes Draper. So if the energy is not absorbed by the superficial tissue, it will be transmitted to deeper tissue. Energy must be absorbed to affect matter, and the effects are seen at the point of absorption. It's so basically, it, again, it's just saying you, if the energy isn't absorbed by the superficial tissue, then it will be transmitted deeper until it does get absorbed by deeper tissue. And... Um, the the only point that'll the tissue will only be affected at the point of absorption. So you're doing that ultrasound on the O line guys uh O line player's hamstring and if you don't have it if you're trying if you don't have it cranked up, it's just gonna get absorbed in that fat and you'll get all the results of the ultrasound, all the things you're trying to accomplish with the ultrasound will happen in the apodose tissue not in the hamstring tissue that you want to get to so you gotta make sure that it's getting down there deeper deep enough and you gotta know the characteristics of your radiation or what you're using if you're using something that's uh, like a heat pack to treat a hamstring you gotta know it's only gonna get absorbed in the superficial tissue so you might need to use something like an ultrasound to get deeper into that tissue the so laws of electromagnetic other laws of electromagnetic radiation are the cosine. Cosine law it says that the angulation of rays determines the intensity of the energy or minimizes the refraction. Optimal energy occurs when the source of the radiation is at a right angle. So what this means is the straighter you have something at a uh, closer to, closest to a right angle the greater the absorption and the less refraction is going to occur. So when you're doing ultrasound you got to make sure that ultrasound head is flat against the body's tissue and as as much as a right angle as you can. If you start daydreaming about what you're going to do tonight, what you're going to watch at the movies tonight, and you start angling that ultrasound head a little bit here and there, you're not going to get as much uh, as effective a treatment because there's going to be more refraction. And finally, the inverse square law, and this is, says that the intensity of radiation striking a particular surface varies inversely with the square of the distance from the radiating surface. So as the distance from the surface increases, the intensity decreases. So the more surface area you have, the less intensity of that radiation that you'll have. And um, the best example I can give is, say you take a garden hose and you turn the water on. And if you just hold the garden hose, the water is going to come out of the opening at a certain uh, pace. It will just kind of come out and eventually die off and fall to the ground. However, if you decrease that surface area or and by putting your thumb over half of that hole, that water is going to shoot out further and stronger from that hose. You can do the same thing with the electrical e-stem. You can use the bigger pads and you'll see that you'll have to turn up, you'll, you'll have all the same parameters, but you'll have to turn up the intensity a lot more because there's more surface area um, on that pad but if you switch to a normal a smaller pad you won't have to turn it up as much to get a more intense feeling because you have less, less, less of a surface area so electromagnetic modalities Electric, any kind of electrical stimulating current any kind of biofeedback iontophoresis diathermy infrared modalities, those are heat and ice, and laser are all examples of them. Now the acoustic spectrum. Properties 
And these are the properties of sound waves. Sound waves, waves travel much slower, but the wavelengths are considerably shorter in the acoustic spectrum at any given frequency. But an inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency still exists. And ultrasound waves must travel through a medium. The more dense, the greater the travel. Basically, the take-home message in all of this is that sound waves travel much slower, so you've got to move the ultrasound head uh, slower. They said four centimeters per second, so that's kind of a slower pace. And the and so if you're moving the the ultrasound head much faster, you're not going to get a good uh, treatment because you're not giving those tra sound waves time to travel beneath down through the tissue. And you really do need a some kind of medium, so you can't just do straight ultrasound. You need some kind of medium, whether it's a uh, a bladder filled with water, doing the ultrasound in the water, or most of the time, like we use, is a water-based gel. You can also use mineral oil or a lotion with mineral oil. So, what are some prim principles of the modality use? First is preparation for treatment and the first part of this is the selection or, or the modality and you always base this on evaluation of the injury um, you may also have physician prescription so if you're working in a clinic the physician will actually write out a subscription or prescription for electro you know please treat with ultrasound and e-stem sometimes if you're like at a high school or in a college setting you have standing orders then that's just something the your team physician will write out that gives you permission to use basically any kind of treatment uh, or any kind of modality for treatments that you that you feel are necessary and you need to establish or revise your treatment goals if you're seeing someone for the first time you need to figure out what are your treat your what are your goals of your treatment are you trying to create them pain free trying to get rid of swelling things like that and as the uh, as the injury uh, gets older and you let's say someone starts to heal and all they don't have as much swelling and, but have more soreness then you need to revise your treatment goals to less less uh, swelling reduction and more pain reduction and your modality selection should be based on your treatment goals